show. I'm Melissa Ridgen, and today we are putting comfort, food, and focus. We have a 13-year-old boy from Sudbury cooking with love for his city's less fortunate, and the, peop and the couple that he's helping, uh, who started up Vi's Pantry to feed 300 hungry Sudburyans every week. Uh, we're talking to them, too. Then we learn how to cook Arctic char from Inuit chef extraordinaire Trudy Metcalf Co. It's a great show. Let's get started. We're going to go uh, Vi's Pantry. It started in May when Vi Blount uh, decided to make some soup and scones for hungry folks who frequent Sudbury's Memorial Park. Since then, it has grown in a very good way. Our friends at CTV Sudbury caught up with them this past summer. Macaroni, potatoes, meatballs. The menu is enough to make just about anyone's mouth water. A few Sudburyans are being treated to lunch thanks to the generosity of the Blounts and their team of volunteers. And organizers say it all started with a conversation. After that, I brought her down. Uh, she was amazed about the homeless people, the elderly that just, they, they don't have enough food. They're hungry, they're always, always hungry, thirsty. Uh, she just wanted to do something about it. And this is how it started. Meet Auntie Vi herself. She, her family and volunteers have been serving up warm meals each and every Sunday. It started out with just a few donations that I came down with. And then I received donation after donation and then got volunteers that cooked the meals. And then it just all evolved to this. Their efforts are not only welcomed, but certainly appreciated in the city's core. Each and every Sunday, they now have a line before they even start serving. There's children come here, families come here, elders come here. And it's all, you know, we sit and talk with them too, you know, and they feel all welcomed. There needs to be more, um, more people uh, like this, but it's a start and it's a move in the right direction. This is part of our community. And seeing some people like this giving out of their free will and out of their own heart is awesome. It's very touching and inspiring. All are welcome. One of the main rules is you must be respectful of one another. Auntie Vi says they'll do this as long as they can. As long as I can keep it going. As long as there's still people out there need a good home cooked meal, I'm fine. The Blounts figure they've probably served about 2,000 meals or so since starting their efforts a couple months ago. And they want people out there to know they are not alone. We can get through anything together as a community. Ian Campbell, CTV News, Sudbury. Thanks to our friends at CTV for that. Well, joining us now is Auntie Vi herself and her husband, Dave Blount, and some of their helpers, Patricia Charleboy and her uh, son, Brandon. Thank all of you so much for joining us. Brandon, my first question is for you. I mean, you're just, you're just 13, you're just a kid. How long have you been cooking for? Not that I can remember it, but um, about a year, maybe. Uh, and when, is that when you decided that you, you wanted to start cooking or had you always kind of wanted to do it and just weren't brave enough to start firing up the stove yet? Well, it was actually my mom that um, like, got me into cooking, so yeah. Well, and I watch you, your mom and I are both members of the Métis Foodies page, so I've seen you for a long time before I'm meeting you here today, so I've kind of been one of your biggest fans quietly here from, from Winnipeg watching what you're cooking up in Sudbury. Uh, Patricia, you know, you saw this, this skill. Uh, how did it end up that he'd be not just cooking for your family, but for Sudbury's uh, homeless and hungry? Well, Brandon is a very determined young man, and um, he has numerous struggles that he that he deals with on a daily basis. So, for him to get involved into cooking was a way of of his releasing his his stress, his anxiety, and his depression. And the kitchen is one of his happiest places. Yes. And now that he knows he has some fans on Métis Foodies <laughs> who are pushing him ahead. He's just really, really thrilled on it. And Vi and her husband have been great to take us on to be able to help them out. Uh, Vi, you started feeding the hungry in Sudbury back in May to keep yourself busy. Uh, you said, what was going on for you back then to, to get Vi's pantry started? Um, when I got started, it was, uh, I went down with like a pot of soup mm -hmm. and, and some scone. And we served about 50 people, so 
I seen there was a great need, so I had to go back, and that's when I started Vice Pantry. Yeah. When you'd said, you know, you were looking for something to kind of occupy your brain, uh, make you feel like you're giving back to the community, what had happened? Uh, my granddaughter had passed away to type uh, 1 diabetes. And, um, and I couldn't help, uh, I couldn't help with their healing and their uh, journey, so I had to find something to do to help. Yeah. So, well, and it was... Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a show. We're we're used to kids and pets. That's it's not a big deal. It's the reality of the world that we're living in now. We can't have you here in our studio, so we have to do everybody from home. And people have things at home, like kids and pets. And we're happy to hear hear your little pooch in the background there, Dave. It was actually you that kind of helped to get this started, I guess, right? You had uh, convinced Vi to maybe go in and feed some people. What was going on for you uh, back then when this got started? Well, at that time, I was uh, downtown with other associations, mm -hmm. and I was uh, shocked and amazed at about the homeless and the needy. When I came home and I talked to Vi about it, mm -hmm. and got her involved, and ah! from there it just it bloomed. Well, and so how did the did it spread like just word of mouth through the community, or were you guys doing like public service announcement blasts? Because Vi had said when this started, it was like fifty people. Uh, and you guys are up to 300 people now every Sunday. No, it just went from uh, setting up in Dina Lane here in Sudbury. Uh, people noticed us. I would walk through the park, introduce ourselves, and um, people would come up. So just by word of uh, the community. I would uh, say. What are some of the things that you guys feed to, to the people of Sudbury? I'm sorry? What are some of the things you guys feed the people of Sudbury? Um, we do a very wide variety from uh, always a hot food, hot soup. Uh, Thanksgiving, we had turkey dinner, uh, mashed potatoes, vegetables, desserts. Uh, we do culture dinners, mm -hmm. um, hot coffee. We do a wide variety of everything. Depends on what the community donates is what we cook. Yeah. Vi, what what's, what's been the biggest surprise to you in terms of the community uh, offering support? Um, the big surprise to me is uh, when I reached out to ask for donations and uh, I was so overwhelmed. I got donation after donation after donation. Nice. Well, and this started, I mean, I remember seeing a picture of, uh, of just, you know, three giant pots of soup cooking on your stove. Is it, a, <laughs> yeah. is it a little easier now that you've got people who are taking on some of that, cooking things at their own home and then bringing them to feed people? Does it take a little bit of the stress off of you? Oh, yes, it does for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I put it out there to uh, anybody who's offering a meal is welcome to do so. Because downtown, we're like, I can't stress it enough. We're like a, um, we're a big family downtown, family oriented, from the volunteers to the homelessness to the elders to the families. Yeah, Patricia, what, what, when did you get involved with Vi's Pantry? What, what happened that you took notice and said, "I've got this kid who loves to cook. We could use that and get involved in what uh, Vi and Dave are doing." Actually, it's not too long ago. I was I discovered Vi's Pantry on Facebook, actually. Mm -hmm. And I, I asked Brandon and my other son if they would be willing to want to volunteer. And Brandon said, yeah, but I'd like to cook. Mm -hmm. And so from there, um, he's just been cooking up a storm. And uh, we're so proud of him for the work he's been doing. Brandon, what's your favorite thing that you've cooked so far for people? Uh, probably beans. I that was one of my favorite pictures. I mean, I loved you with the sugar cookies and the um, what was the, the uh, sugar fudge? I can't remember how to say it. The sugar fudge. I love those pictures. But when I saw you with the big vat of beans and you just looked so proud, and I knew that you were taking that food to people who really need it, I was just I was very proud of you. So I can only imagine how proud your mom is and how thankful Vi um, and Dave are that you come. What's your favorite thing about going and helping out there, Brandon? Just like seeing like all the good things that we're doing to help people and, and yeah. And I heard you and your brother maybe want to do a recipe book in the future? Yep. Well, can we expect that anytime soon? 
Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Patricia, you, it seems like you're a little busy in the kitchen. I don't know. Maybe you'll have to get your brother to start writing those recipes down as you're going and compiling them, right? Because you're busy, you know, in your, with your chef's hat on. Um, you know, Patricia, you had said you've, you've seen so much growth in Brandon uh, watching him do this. Dave, you said that you've just, in a very short amount of time, have seen a change in Brandon, too. What have you seen? I've, I've seen um, the look in his eye, the smile in his face and coming forward mm. um i'm very proud of him he's a he's a wonderful boy mm. well what's next for vi's pantry you know winter is coming you guys have been parked out at memorial park uh, every sunday for a couple hours feeding people obviously a little more difficult when the cold weather hits sudbury is not a warm place uh, in the winter time much like brand or winnipeg here uh what's going to be the plan to keep feeding people uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a pre uh, pre single meals, and then we're going to go around with our little red wagon we we purchase <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hand out the meals. Uh, is there anything that you guys are wanting for? Is there is there something that Vice Pantry had put out asking the public for right now that you guys are fundraising for or a need that could be filled? Well, we we don't do fundraising. We just rely on the community. It doesn't matter what the community gives us. Uh, every little thing counts. Mm -hmm. um, my wife does wonders with the cooking, with everything that she does get. Mm -hmm. It's all we ask is just keep the donations coming, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll go from there. And people find you on uh, the Vise Pantry Facebook page. Is that the best way to That's get a hold of you? Yes. That's correct. Yeah. How what many? She, does is that she posts the meal yeah. for the week, saying donations appreciated and they just start coming in uh, every day, five, six donations every day. So without the community, Vice Pantry couldn't have happened. How do you feel? I mean, you guys never planned this though, right? Like you went out to just fill a need. I don't think either one of you from talking to you ever expected that this was gonna turn into what it's turned into. Like, how do you feel when you look and see just the, the community support that's, that's created this? From the first time my wife made that pot of soup, we went down and did you know, 35, 40 people. She decided that she has to do something. Um, people like Brandon came forward yeah. and his wife and many other great volunteers. Yeah. I, I can't really put it in words. It's just um, overwhelming. Yeah. The, 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 um, the, the community, um, the people, the volunteers. Yeah, it's very hard to explain. You'll have to experience it to, to actually feel it. Yeah. And again, Brandon, thank you very much for everything. Brandon, do you feel pretty proud when you hear Dave say stuff like that? Yeah. I would imagine. You should feel very proud. Um, Vi, you know, I'll ask you the same question. How do you feel when you look to see what this started as versus what it is now and continuing to grow? Um, it's very overwhelming very very overwhelmed because i there is a lot of help out there there's a lot of people with great hearts there's a lot of people that uh come together with as the volunteers i get a lot of messages for families that come to volunteer and even the homeless volunteer so you know they go around and they gather up the garbage from the people that you know the meals the containers and they're always always offering the help you guys are all such inspirations. Uh, Patricia, you know, you get top mom honors for, for making this something that Brandon can do. I have so much respect for all of you. You guys are just amazing. And we're so thankful that you guys could take time today to come and share this with our In Focus audience. We hope that, uh, you know, people look at this and say, wow, these are just four regular people doing their thing, uh, helping their community. And hopefully people get inspired by that and, and can take some action in their own communities. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Thank you very much. We should tell you too that Brandon spent some time uh, this summer living and cooking on the land with his grandpa on his trap line. He was harvesting uh, food and cooking on an open fire. We will uh, look forward to the recipe book though that uh, Brandon and his brother are working on. We need to take a break, but when we come back, esteemed Inuit chef Trudy Metcalf Co takes us into the kitchen to cook Arctic char. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Trudy Metcalf Co. is from Nain Labrador, and she invited InFocus into her Ottawa kitchen uh, earlier this fall to show us her signature blackened char with homemade hollandaise sauce and pan-seared potatoes and broccoli. In this first segment, Trudy's going to walk us through prepping the fish, preparing the blackening rub, uh, and getting the sides all started. Trudy, thank you for having us over to teach us how to, tr to cook Arctic char. What are we making exactly? Uh, well, I'm happy to have you here. It's, it's nice to be cooking for other people. Yes, right? <laughs> We're going to be doing a blackened Arctic char. Mm -hmm. uh, sides are going to be pan fried um, potatoes. They're just a variety of potatoes. And we're just going to do uh, broccoli um, and a hollandaise sauce. Because mm. hollandaise sauce, in my head, I wanted to do asparagus. I couldn't find asparagus, so we're doing broccoli. I've never had hollandaise sauce on broccoli. Hollandaise sauce on anything is good. It's good. It's, it's good on a spoon. Right? Yes. <laughs> so yes. That's what we're going to try and do. I've done as much pre-prep, but we'll talk about what needs to be done as we go through to, like, from start to finish. And this is something you've been eating since you were little. This is your country food. Yes. Uh, I remember growing up and my favorite way to do Arctic char, my grandfather used to smoke his own. Mm -hmm. So he had a smokehouse and I would wait for the day for that to open and then he would give me like a half of a smoke Arctic char and I would just sit there with all the oils running oh, around my arms. Oh my gosh, and this is why your skin is so nice, all that Arctic char oil all those years, yeah. right? And it, it's okay. a nice fish and it's as close to organic as we can get and it, yeah. is, from, it is from Nunavut. Um, so it's easily accessible, fairly easily accessible, I shouldn't say easily accessible. But, you know, we have contacts. We have right. friends. We have family. There's some fisheries up there that we can order from. I was going to ask you that, too. So, I mean, people are going to see this and they're going to say, I need Arctic char in my life. Yeah. Um, if you want to access country food from, from the north, there's places that you can get it from for us poor southerners who can't yes. just go and catch one ourselves. And, and more often than not, when you see Arctic char in a store, it's a farmed Arctic char. So it's not the same. Nobody's eating okay. farm nothing around no. here. You know, uh, so yeah, there's two fisheries that I order from. Uh, one is the Kavalik Arctic Foods in our in Rankin Inlet, okay. and they, you know, the nice thing about these fisheries, they support local fishers and hunters. So nice. you know, they're buying from the from their whoever their local communities are. And the other one is Pang Fisheries out of Pangerton, and Pang Fisheries actually exports like overseas and everything. So they do Arctic char and turbot and Kavelic Arctic Foods does the Arctic char plus they do like caribou and muskox and uh, any of the foods. We're going to have to come back one. after we learn how to do the char we're going to have to come back and do the caribou oh, and the muskox. Yes. Because you're and muskox, <laughs> it's, it's, it's what it's becoming more like a favorite. That's crazy. And it's really I need to nice this. to make a soup like just make a nice simple soup with it. And it's always soup time. Oh, Any time of year is a good time, time for soup. Definitely. Okay. So I haven't uh, filleted an Arctic char in a while. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try it because for me, I like to have the Arctic char filleted for the, for the blackened seasoning. Mm -hmm. As opposed, it would be really easy just to cut it in steaks and then it would look, I would look really professional. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to do that because I like it the other way. And the one thing I forgot is I need a plate. Can a you, plate. Reach, if you go into that top drawer, mm -hmm. Yep, just a flat plate. Perfect. And um, so if I were up north, somebody I would be finding somebody to give like these bits to. Or like for myself, what I'll do is I'll just use them to make a fish stock or something. Yeah. Um, but the head is a delicacy for a lot of Inuit, especially her elders, so we always pass that on to somebody if we don't eat it ourselves. And the eyeballs that, you know. I've never tried you, it. I was going to say, are you a fan? <laughs> I, I've never, I shouldn't say, I, I can't say yes or no because I've <laughs> never tried it. Um, but yeah, eyeballs, I just can't imagine that pop in my mouth. <laughs> it just doesn't, that texture thing, right? Yes. So I'm going to be, I'm not going to be deboning the whole thing. I'm going to cut the fins off, uh, cut off the big pieces here. This char came from Ikhadawit Waters and just a couple of weeks ago, my daughter's uh, boyfriend's father came down and he brought it down here. Brought treats. Yeah. Did he bring you any muskox? No, we don't get muskox in that part of the, of, the, of Nunavut. Of Nunavut. It comes okay. from Western Arctic, but you can order it from Rankin Inlet area. So um, from Cabellic Fishers. Um, but if I wanted muskox. You got people. I Yeah, I know <laughs> enough people where I can find some. So I'm just cutting down right along the spine here and basically cutting all those bones a little bit. And I'm going to try and do the same thing on the other side and keep as much meat as possible. I messed up a bit there, but that's okay.
yeah, not uh, not as efficient as it could be. <laughs> but that's okay because it's going to make a nice stock. The extra, for extra for the stock. Yeah. So I'll just make it easier for freezing. Or my mother-in-law will actually love to have that. <laughs> So, yeah, I got some of the bones. A lot of the bones, you feel these little pin bones. Mm -hmm. If you want to, you can pull them out. But you guys are going to be eating it. You know there's bones in it. <laughs> so. uh, my own filleting abilities, I'm used to bones. <laughs> yeah, I'm not as good as I could be because I'm just not. And a lot of the times I, or I get my fish, like when I'm doing cooking for large groups and stuff, um, my fish comes down filleted. The other thing is a lot of people, I guess a lot of chefs would take the skin off. I think you're wasting the best part of the fish by taking the skin off because I love the skin when it's crispy especially. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to take the, remove the skin. So I think that's, that's all I need to do with that. Um, so next we're going, we're just going to leave it here. It's, and I'm going to get some other things on the go here, make the blackening mm. rub. I need to wash my hands. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful. Shiny fish. Yep. It's all nice. So we're going to be having mm. sides with broccoli. Okay. I'm just going to par cook the broccoli. I don't want it, it's just the water's pre-boiled. So um, a good rule of thumb, everybody to know, when you're cooking vegetables, um, any, any Vegetables that grow above ground, you start them off in boiling water to cook them. Okay. If vegetables grow underground, you can start them from cold water. So underground cold, above ground hot. This is good to remember. Because a lot of people, like they put the broccoli into cold water and turn it on yeah. and by the, time it's, by the time it's cooked, it's brown. Yes, and mushy. So, and mushy. Yeah. So yeah, always, uh, so above ground hot, below ground cold. So that's the fish for now. We'll put that up there. Uh, for the blackening rub, this is a recipe that I came up with on my own. Just I, I read a whole bunch of recipes online and decided to figure it out my, from myself because... Because you're the them, experts. Well, it's... You're the food lady. Uh, for cooking for me, it's... Uh, you, you do what works for you and your family. Right. So, yeah, so there were some things that I didn't like, so I didn't put them in. Some other things I added extra. And because we're only doing a small amount, you can make a, you can make a bunch because it's good for any other meats. It's good on you know on chicken, on pork, on other fish or anything like that. So you've got smoked paprika. So yeah, and I'm going to do probably about a half teaspoon of each thing. Does it matter? I know. I mean, I have paprika at home, but I don't necessarily know that it's smoked. Does it matter? Uh, smoked has more essence and taste. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So when you're buying paprika buy the smoked. Don't cheap out. The other stuff is just, it's more for decoration. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of flavor. I think the only thing I use mine for is deviled eggs. And it's yeah. for exactly for decoration. Yeah, but you'll have, but you'll, you'll notice a difference if you have the smoke. Okay. It's got that little bit of extra flavor. Uh, cayenne. I don't like heat. I, I don't like heat. So this is not even going to be, like it's just going to be a dash. Okay. And I hope I don't get any online. <laughs> but it needs it. It's a black and rub, right? Uh, salt, maybe about a quarter teaspoon. And I don't use measurements. I just eye everything because I've been cooking so much and so mm -hmm. long. I kind of know. So black pepper, about a quarter teaspoon. Uh, garlic and granulated garlic. I like the heavier ones. And garlic powder. So I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of that, just under. That's important. Garlic powder, not the salt. Not the salt because when you're buying when you're buying like uh, garlic salt, onion salt, celery salt, you're paying for the salt. You can get all those. You can get all those things without the salt in them, and you can add the amount of salt you want. Right. Because I always find they're overpowering with salt. So whenever I do use uh, powders, it's never with salt. I just add my own. Uh, this is onion powder, and I also like to to support small companies. <laughs> so if I see these little ones around somewhere, so onion powder about a teaspoon. Uh, thyme leaves, um, probably about a teaspoon also. And I always uh, scrunch mine in my hands just to kind of wake them up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that. And I have some Newfoundland savory because 
Um, it's not the same as any other savory. It's Newfoundland savory. And Good to know. Part of my roots are in Newfoundland. Do you have to go to Newfoundland to get it, or is no, that something else you can no. source online too? No, you can get it almost like so many fish stores and things. And when I see it in a fish store, I just buy like 18 or 20 packages. That's, that's the stocking <laughs> stuffers for your loved ones. Here's it your is. Newfoundland savory. Yeah, because you know, <laughs> I also need it for stuffing, right? For chicken and turkey and mm. all that stuff. So I think that's all that I had. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all I put into my rub. Um, if people want, they can go online, look up recipes. A lot of the recipes online are really, really good. And, you know, add, what, add something more that you like. Take out what you don't like. Mm. If you like more garlic, add more garlic. If you like more onion, and you could make this hot, right? Just by adjusting the cayenne, you would you could blow yeah. the nostrils out. Yeah, then I wouldn't be able to enjoy my char. <laughs> so I can't do that. <laughs> uh, so the other thing that we want is so now the blackening rub is ready. A way to get the blackening rub to stick to the fish is we we're going to dip our fish in melted butter. Okay. So and you know. Butter is probably my favorite. I was just gonna say you're a lady after my own heart with a tub of butter that size, yeah. the big buttery cube bowl. Out of anything and everything that I eat, butter is my favorite. I, I only agree. Eat bread so I can have butter. Yes. Yes. So I'm just gonna put that on the stove. Actually, I'm gonna do more because I'm. Gonna my this is. Oops. I have the same at yeah. home. If it's you put it in the middle, burner. Way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, and my that. broccoli is done. So I'm going to be using melted butter also from, I don't have a microwave. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to melt the butter for both, for the uh, blackening rub and the... When she says she loves butter, she's not lying. <laughs> <laughs> she's a lady who loves her I, butter, and I love oh, a lady who loves her butter, like I do. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> I have nothing but good things to say about butter. Yes. I have to take the broccoli off because it is perfect right now. the strainer? No, I'm just going to do it like this. Yeah, don't do what I do, because uh, I can tolerate a significant amount of heat <laughs> on my hands. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I take too many chances And sometimes. saving on no, no extra dishes. Yeah, that too. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to drain them, and then I'm going to just let the steam um, come off, okay. because the steam is water, right? Yeah. So we want, I want that steam to come, I'm going to grab a plate. Mm. I want that steam to come off to get rid of... So we have more of a, of a broccoli taste, whereas if it's full of water, then it's going to taste more watery. So we'll just let that cool down. So I'm going to toss that into the frying pan after. Missed that one. Um, I don't know how long this... Yeah, it's going to be too slow. We'll put it on that one. And this is... So I can give you the job of uh, okay. making sure this doesn't burn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to, you got to think about what I'm doing here. We're going to be doing some fried potatoes. So these are just pan seared potatoes. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do those in this pan. Get this out of the way. Get those started. So I partially cooked my potatoes. You don't have to. It just makes it a lot quicker when you're trying to put a meal together quickly. Right. To parboil them. So they're, they're pretty al dente. And we're just going to fry them up in a frying pan with uh, a few herbs, some garlic, and um, some fresh cilantro at the end. We're going to toss it in at the end so it doesn't cook, mm. but it breaks the essence for it. And I used my cutting board as there. Okay, let's not bother with that. I'm just going... So I'm going to just... Is it starting to melt? Yeah. Oh, okay, we can turn this down to a really low. Um, I'm just going to... Like, mince up some garlic right into my frying pan here with the butter already. And you can chop your garlic and have bigger pieces. Uh, I'm doing mine really fine. Mm -hmm. So the finer you do garlic, the stronger it's going to be. So that's another thing too, right? piece of that. And I really like garlic. Second only so, to butter. Second only to butter. It's a, it's a good marriage too, it right? Is. Garlic and, and butter. And hopefully you don't have to be in, in anybody's faces later on. <laughs> <laughs> or whoever, you just have to be around the people who have also who, eaten it. Yes. It cancels it all out. Nobody yeah. notices it at that point. And you know, a lot of people are wearing masks these days, so that's another benefit. <laughs> Extra garlic for everybody. Yeah. 
So for, I'm making potatoes for about six people there. And I use two fairly large cloves of garlic. Um, you can use more, you can use less. And I like this to do it, like I said, on this rasp. I would be doing it by knife normally otherwise. But now that I have this nice new gadget, I love it. <laughs> I'm all about gadgets. <laughs> so I'm just doing another rinse here. And I always clean as I go. Mm -hmm. makes I'm trying so much to uh, get the men in my house to understand that concept. <laughs> the butter is melted enough, it'll keep melting. And mm -hmm. so I needed this. Oh, I'm going to make a hollandaise sauce. What else did I? Oh, the melted butter for dipping. So, hollandaise sauce, I need to, because we need to get that going fairly soon. So, for hollandaise sauce, you're only going to be using egg yolks. Uh, standard recipe would be two egg yolks with about a quarter cup of butter. Okay. I'm going to be doubling it, so <laughs> I'm going to be using four egg yolks. Anything, to, anytime I see something that requires egg whites or egg yolks, I always think, what do I do with the other part of the egg? Do you, what do you save yours for? I don't. I just... Just out. Yeah. I'm not a dessert maker. It would be great, like if you're making meringues or something like that. Mm. Um, but... I always, you know, you could have egg white omelets. Yeah, but what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you think. I just lost egg yolk. <laughs> Not putting myself on that sort of a diet, no. I mean, I don't cook enough at home with eggs to save them. Mm. And, um, yeah, I want the whole thing. <laughs> it's, it's, I feel kind of bad for the egg white, but... <laughs> um, no, egg yolks. So, four egg yolks. I'm going to start these up on a... Now, I need to figure out... I don't want... Because this is going to be on a double boiler for the hollandaise sauce. Um, so you I've want to start... I've never made my own hollandaise. It's, a lot of people are afraid. Yeah. It's so easy to do as long as you're very careful with your temperature. Okay. So, I want to bring my water to a boil here. Um, that's for the inside one. I gotta get that pan going. Too. And how much water did you put in here? Like half just, full? No, I don't want. I just want the steam on the pot. Okay. I don't want the the pan sitting in water. So I'm gonna bring that to a boil. That's for my back burner. The stove is challenging me. <laughs> so and that's a big burner. That doesn't have to be cooktop on. So it doesn't have to be the big one. Okay. So this is for the front. This is for the back. Okay. Challenges. <laughs> um, and with the for hollandaise sauce, so you're starting off with cold water, and you want to bring it to temperature to get it boiling. Okay. Uh, but then you're going to turn it down because you you're you're cooking your egg yolks. You don't want to scramble your eggs. See okay, how it's so already cold, starting. Cold cold water in the bottom, only cold a little bowl. bit. Cold bowl. Yeah. Yolks go in. Yeah. And, and as it's heating. It's, it's going slowly to be cooking the bowl your very, yolk. at very gentle temperature. This is starting to steam up. It's starting to get warm. So and you want to keep moving. This is something that you don't want to do anything else pretty much while you're doing this uh, because it, it will mess up. And I might mess it up. <laughs> Let's but hope you I know what? I feel like <laughs> it's so. Everything that is in Hollandaise is so delicious. Even messed up Hollandaise is still. Yeah, yeah it's just the texture. texture. Then you get this curvy texture. So my water, this is going to be, I have four egg yolks, so I want to be doing about a half a cup of butter. Okay. Um, I've done it often enough where I can kind of see when I have enough in there. And you just want to be drizzling in ever so gently, uh, very, very slowly. And so it's emulsifying and the egg yolks are actually cooking with your melted butter a little bit, but more from the steam uh, that's on the bottom of your bowl. Mm -hmm. And if, it, if you find that your your things are getting too warm, you can lift it off the heat a little bit, dunk it down into some ice water, okay. cold bowl, cold uh, cloth, anything to stop it from This cooking. is making me sweat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a lot of pressure as opposed to the ripping open the, the package of hollandaise and jumping it in. I was, uh, I was in the other week, recent, well recently, a few months ago, and I made holiday sauce for 120 people in one shot. And it I hope, they, like, I hope they came out and gave you a standing ovation. It, it, wow. I was just so <laughs> pleased with myself. I'm going to try it. Because if it doesn't work, then i got to figure out what I'm going to do with all these ingredients otherwise. 
and mm. it was perfect and it's like wow if I can do it for 120 I can do it for 40. yes so you can see that like the water's not even boiling oh and I can smell the garlic we need smell vision for the garlic <laughs> it's starting to yeah that's for the potatoes so we're just going to turn that one down a little bit and just let it simmer for a moment I don't want to forget this do as I say not as I do because I, bet <laughs> I stopped it <laughs> And you can see it's starting yes. to cook a bit. That's the eggs, the egg yolks cooking. Doing its thing. And so once I'm done with this, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, fresh squeezed lemon juice. Mm. And we're going to add some fresh dill to it because we're doing it for fish. And you can, the other thing that you can notice too, like if you, you can know you're going off, is when it, if it starts sticking to the sides. Okay. Mine is not, so that's a good sign. So yeah, I'm going to add uh, dill to it, a little bit of salt, pepper, lemon juice. And we're just going to put it on the side to have for the fish. Okay. Um, hollandaise sauce is a base for uh, bearnaise sauce, which is uh, just that beautiful buttery sauce. Yeah. That what make, That's a good steaks. question. I never thought of that. What's the difference between bearnaise and hollandaise? Uh, it's uh, you're making a tarragon. You're adding a tarragon reduction to it, tarragon and uh, white wine vinegar. So if you're just getting started on these things, start with your hollandaise before you venture into the world of Bernays. Uh, it doesn't take, it's, you're just going to do a little bit of shallots, a little bit of tarragon, white wine vinegar. You kind of uh, chop that all up, put it in a pan, reduce it, and then you add it into your hollandaise sauce. And now you have a Bernays sauce, which is so good on steaks. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is pretty much it for the whole, you can see the consistency. Okay. Um, yeah, so for me that's good. Mm -hmm. It's warm. I'm going to be uh, adding a little bit of just a squeeze of lemon juice. And you know, if you have a lemon squeezer, use your lemon squeezer. I love gadgets, <laughs> but I didn't bring my lemon squeezer. I don't have one here. So I'm just going to use a fork. And Old school. I'm, yeah, squeeze it. I'm going to squeeze it not upside down because this has, I can see it has seeds in it. Now the seeds goes in, just pick them out. So do that, and then give it a squeeze through your fingers. Mm. And it, lemon juice, whatever works for your taste. You and your family, if you want more citrusy, that's fine. If you want less. I don't think that you could go too citrusy with something like no. fish, hey? Um, and dill, citrusy fish, yeah. and dilly fish, yeah. garlicky fish. If I was going to be serving this uh, lemon, this hollandaise on a side mm. dish also, like we could put it on the broccoli, but broccoli is also delicious butter. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I'm actually going to add the dill to it now. So I have some fresh dill here, already just minced right up. Mm -hmm. So and dill is like a fresh dill is really really mm -hmm. nice. So you almost can't do too much. And uh, a little bit of salt and pepper. Some chefs would uh, some chefs would hate me for using black pepper because then you see your pepper. And it's like. Use white if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I like black. And I think all of us have black pepper at home. Everybody has right? black pepper at home. The only reason you would use white pepper is that you don't want to see the pepper. The pepper uh, all those, those fancy pepper. people. Yeah. Joy taste? Yes. And let's just hope it worked. Eggy buttery goodness. Mm. Yeah, everything <laughs> works. So you could really use any fish in this recipe, uh, and if you want Arctic char and don't live in the Arctic, good news, there are harvesters that sell their catch. Uh, we have to take a short break when we come back. Uh, the big finale, the frying of the fish and the tasting. Stay with us. Welcome back. Before the break, we were cooking with chef Trudy Metcalf Co, who welcomed us into her kitchen in Ottawa recently. Uh, she had just finished, and let me taste this homemade hollandaise sauce, which was way easier than I thought. Uh, now we're going to finish off the sides, and we're going to get to frying that Arctic char. So, oh, yes. the garlic is brown. Oh, yes. I'm going Whoa. to so toss some potatoes in. Like I said, these are already par cooked, so basically we're browning them what we want to do with these and just with the garlic the butter you can do a little bit of salt and pepper I don't I don't cook with a lot of salt some things need it to enhance the flavors mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of people who don't like salt so if it's not salty enough for some people they can add salt at the table and so that's all that's going to be happening with this we just want that those to brown up 
this is for to dip our fish in. It's weird because things are starting to pile up in front of me and I don't like it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I usually clean as I go. Um, so now we are going to just dip our fish. I should put this pan on. We'll get that one started. So frying fish, um, medium high heat. Closer to medium than high. I'm going to do mine four to six minutes. Actually, probably three to five minutes on either side. Uh, so it stays more of a medium. Okay. And the thicker your fish is, the longer you want to cook it, of course. And the way you want it cooked. Just like steak, right? Yeah. And as you know, we, we eat a lot of fish raw. Frozen yes. raw. So. Well, and I was going to ask you about that, too. I mean, this is not your, your country way of eating fish, typically. No. You do the fusion. Um, yeah. Is there... Is there a growing demand for for country foods with a kind of uh, newer urban twist? I I think as Inuit, we probably eat more fish frozen raw than we eat cooked. Uh, when it comes to cooking in the south, I think a lot of people would prefer to have their fish, all of their meats cooked. Yes. But, you know, we eat our caribou frozen raw. We are muktuk. Mm -hmm. Raw. I've had muktuk. Yeah. I've had it right off the beluga when we caught it from the oh, ocean. I have not. <laughs> not the beluga. In I had mine. A friend <laughs> shipped it down for me. Yeah. So we could try some. Yeah. So, um, there's, I feel those bones. I feel like I want to take them out, but I'm not going to because it's going to take a lot of extra time. So all I'm going to do is that this pan is heating up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to put more butter. <laughs> So we're going to put some butter in the pan. We're also going to put some oil in with that because I, I want it to be so that um, the fish is not going to stick to the pan. We definitely don't want that to stick. So we want to have a little a, more oil than butter. Yeah, we want it to, and, and the oil helps the butter not to burn. Um, but we we don't want the. Um, I don't know how to explain it. People might think that's well, a lot of grease. The thing is, it's not going to. It's going to stay in the pan. Right. Right. But I want to make sure... I would I never judge anybody for their grease. No. <laughs> Especially when it's olive oil and butter, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next thing. So that. I'm um, just browning up these potatoes. Making them a bit crispy. And I just have butter in this one because in this case, I do want the butter to brown. Okay. So that the potatoes are going to be brown. Those look incredible. And so that's all we're doing with those. We're crisping them up. Once they're... I still have a burner on the back. Um, once these are browned to the way that we want them, we're going to turn the heat off and we're going to throw in some fresh cilantro and fresh, fresh dill. <laughs> we're not going to cook those, we're just going to let yes. the heat yeah. release them, release the flavors. So this is getting hot. So all we're going to do here is, and actually if you can grab me another plate, of course, that would be good. I may have... I think maybe I'm going to make more of this. I'm just going to make a bunch because I want to make sure that we have enough. Well, like you said, it's not going to go bad. You can use no. it on chicken. And yeah, so I'm just, oh, this is the cayenne. Be careful with power. Do you come from a long line of people who love to cook? No. <laughs> you're, so you're everybody's favorite relative because it's like stay in her good books so yeah. we can go so and have her cook us our Christmas, mm -hmm. our birthdays. Do you want to come our, for dinner? Can right. you come early enough to cook it? It's like, okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's better that way, right? Then you're not fighting with people in yeah. the kitchen. You have it all to yourself. Yeah. And I enjoy cooking so much, and I enjoy cooking for me. Yeah, I cook for myself and my husband fairly regularly, three or four times a week, I would say. And then there's lots of leftovers because it's hard to cook for two people. Right. Um, but he's really good. He loves leftovers. And a lot of things taste better the next day. True. So, um, yeah, I don't know anybody else in my family who does a lot of cooking. I mean, they cook for families and for themselves and everything, of course. But, yeah. I know we love leftover fish in our house. So you have it for dinner, and we cook all the fish we have. And then so for, des or for uh, breakfast the next day, we love, like, pickerel fried up with your potatoes, leftover potatoes from whatever, mm -hmm. and beans, If I'm going to do anything with leftover fish, I think I would make fish cakes. I've That's done fish good. cakes, too. Yeah. Yes, that is tasty. We, we did that at Feast Bistro yeah. in Winnipeg um, with pickerel. And we learned this recipe, and I had some leftover fried fish and just turned it into fish cakes the next day for an appetizer for some friends that had come over. Sorry. <laughs> um, so basically, 
I just dipped this fish in the butter mm -hmm. and then into the black bean seasoning. This is something you want to do fairly quickly just because you want it all to kind of cook at the same speed. And you can put it on really thick, you can slather it, you can mm -hmm. thin it out a little bit. I just want to make sure I have enough for all the pieces. And because it has skin on the fish, uh, skin side down. Uh, the only reason I can think of oh. for doing that is that the skin will curl up otherwise. So you want the skin to stay down okay. first. And if you can turn that down a tad, that sure. stuff is really hot. That is, how about I do it to be like a five? Yeah. What it was, was it on an eight? Yeah. Okay. And you could do this with whatever country fish you have in your area. Any Probably fish. white, white fish, yeah. trout, salmon, pickerel, trout, salmon. Anything. Okay. Yeah, anything. You can do it on chicken. You can do it on pork chops. Um, yeah, it's, it's just one of those things that, and adjust the seasonings based mm -hmm. on what you're cooking. Because let's say if you're doing caribou, deer, beef, mm -hmm. um, I, would, I would probably do tarragon. Tarragon is really good with red meats, margarine. Mm -hmm. uh, so switch out, let's say, like the savory and stuff. Okay. And put in those, so just to, for the meats that you're cooking. I'm not going to get the last piece, maybe. Mm. It's going to be pretty tight. Yeah, okay. There's a little bit of room over there. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait for that one. I'm just going to check these. Oh, they're browning nicely. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to turn these up a tad more. And I'm gonna... Let's hope that didn't stick to the bottom. Maybe this one. Uh, cast iron would normally be better for this mm -hmm. or a better pan to cook with. But I find cast iron very heavy. So. I don't use, I, I use it for some things, but alternatively, uh, a heavy bottom stainless steel pan. Okay. Oh, another good thing to know too, stainless steel, always put your food in a hot pan. If okay. you put it in a cold pan, it's going to stick. Okay. Except for bacon. You put bacon, bacon can't stick to anything, I guess, no. right? <laughs> so, <laughs> there are so much that. <laughs> Uh, so bacon is the, is the one thing that you would start off on a cold pan. Okay. Because if you put bacon into a hot pan, it's going to curl right up and you know, all those little waves in them. Yeah. So I do my bacon in the oven. Yeah, that's another way. That's the yeah. way I do mine. It stays flat. Yeah. Oh, it smells so good. Yes, it does. I wish people, you can see it and you can hear it. One day you can't somebody what, will. Right? One yeah, day. One day people, someone will invent that. <laughs> I'm going to actually cook, flip it over now, because I don't want it to be overcooked. It looks incredible. And just because it's freeze, this is why I use, I'm using two spatulas here, just so that I'm not splashing and burning myself. This one's got the most blackening rub, that was the first one mm -hmm. in. <laughs> so it's nice because the skin didn't stick to the pan. Yeah. So that's good. It's going to be almost ready. Another three or four minutes. And we'll see how these are doing. So I'm going to actually turn these up, give them a good blitz. And I, want I like that, to, a good blitz. Yeah. I want them to, oh, it's because I have a single burner on. That's what's going on. I, I like gas. <laughs> gas stove is so easy. You can see oh, everything. yeah. People yeah. who love to cook love their gas. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So that's okay. So we have the broccoli, we have the hollandaise, we have the fish, we have mm -hmm. the potatoes. Dinner's almost done. I'm just throwing in some of the fresh herbs, like uh, fresh dill and fresh cilantro. I'm just going to let that sit on top. Let the heat do its thing. It's going to open those flavors up. And then uh, we'll toss it all together just when we're ready to serve it. Mm -hmm. The fish, I think, is probably close to done. And I'm going to take out this piece here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put it on the plate, skin up. Okay. If you put the skin down, you're going to lose your crispiness. Right. So that's that. I'm going to... Mix 
these through a little bit. Those look incredible. And these are so nice and fresh tasting. They're just, mm, I love them. And we'll do a little bit of broccoli. I don't mind broccoli cold, which is, you know, you could, you could heat it up quickly again if you wanted to. No, it's perfect. And then we'll put a little bit of hollandaise sauce on. Oh. I'm going to, I'm not going to put the hollandaise sauce on the fish because again, your skin is kind of crispy here. Okay. So I'm just going to put it off to the, maybe we'll put it between the fish and the broccoli. That way we'll see how it tastes on broccoli. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be a winner. I think so. And uh, that's pretty much it. So it's a nice, healthy, quick dinner. That uh, if you don't so like good. broccoli, switch your vegetable. Too bad. Eat your broccoli. So there we go. That's it. Very Done. good. <laughs> Ta da! Mm -hmm. Tasted even better than it looked. Thanks to John Cook and Jason LaRue, our uh, APTN co colleagues in Ottawa, who helped us with that segment. Uh, if you're in the Sudbury area and you want to help out Vice Pantry, you can find them on Facebook at Vice Pantry for the homeless and less fortunate. Uh, next week, we're going to feature crafters and creators that you need to know about to get your Christmas wish list together. I'm Melissa Ridgen. See you next week.